Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your hosts, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Al, just don't even worry about it. I won't. I won't. I don't know what not to worry about, but I'm. I'm not worried. Whatever they tell you to don't not worry about, you just don't worry about it. Yeah, just go with just whatever they say, man. So Lance and I showed up to a, a meeting. <laughs> showed up meaning uh, uh, helped organize and get people there, um, and then uh, Alex was prepared to speak. Yep. Anyways, we we were told one thing, and then another thing. We weren't prepared to talk about what they wanted to talk about, but it was our main key issue. So in this development, they're doing affordable housing. And who's they? The city. Yep. And actually, uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. Lance is fine with it. Uh, if they come up with rules, if those rules work in the future, um, if it works with the new zoning, if we can plan for it, I honestly don't see. We can see. make it happen. We can make it happen. We, if we have a target to go towards, we can do it. We're, we're seasoned professionals. Yep. And they said, hey, don't worry about it. Not going to be applied to your project. That's basically already through planning and zoning. And the first thing that they brought up, and I think they brought it up to re-hit this point, right? We had to go there. We had to say stuff. But it was, hey, should this apply to... This is what's so crazy because now I don't believe what I just said. Should this apply to projects that didn't get their approval by January in the past? January 1st, 2018. Or June 26th, 2018. So they had two targets. And like that's what and the ver- the or. words I can't express my distaste for the words they used enough. The words were, and this is how they presented it. What would make this more attractive? What would the January first, twenty eighteen date make it? What would make that more attractive to you if yep. we applied this ordinance retroactively to your development project? Yep, over and over and over again. So much they use that term so much. That finally, finally, one member of city council had to speak up and go, look, I don't hear anything from the developers in the crowd. And there are probably, what, three dozen of us there? Oh, it was a it big was crowd. A, it, was a good, it was a good crowd. And we finally had to speak up and say, this word is not working. What you really mean to say is, what would make this turd sandwich more attractive to you? This is all on public record. You can go to, you can go to literally, you can go to, you go to Facebook, you go to Longmont Observer, you can watch the meeting that Alex and I were talking about. Live. If I had time to cut it today, I would actually ec- do excerpts like we did with the city council podcast that we did, which is fantastic. But I don't. the the The, the moral of the story is once again, if you are if you are considering any size of a develop development, and you and you and you are going to go down that road as an architect or, or anybody who who's in this business is, you immediately need to start getting in touch with whoever's whoever's in charge of planning and zoning, obviously, then the city council, and you got to keep your eye on them and the, the, whole, the time. whole time. Don't ever believe that your project is safe from this or that. Watch diligently. Well, because here's the difference between what I hear and what they hear. So I've been hearing from them, oh, this isn't going to apply. Don't worry about it. It's for future projects, all this. And then what we see on the boards is something completely different. It are two suggestions. And, and then this is why we got to keep on it is because what we heard in the meeting, what everyone heard was everyone says financially we've planned this out, our preliminary plot, months before like even going in. So can't be applied retroactively. Uh, would love it to apply future to all future projects, whatever. Everyone's on board with that. So – that's what everyone said, and we're going to go to the next meeting and say, okay, did you guys actually take that into consideration? Yeah. Did, did, you, did you, you hear the same did thing you, I heard yeah. that everyone else said? Yeah. Did you hear what the 36 people in the audience said who were all developers, the whole development community was, community was there, big, small, whatever? Yep. Did you hear us when we said no to retroactive application because, because many of us spoke up and, then, and, and said you will, our financiers, the people who are financing this, they've already agreed on the pro forma that we set out. They've already agreed on where our projected sales prices are. Mm-hmm. If you all of a sudden, if we have to change all of that, they will just say, we're done. We're out of here. 
because yeah. they they're not beholden to anybody. They're really not. At the end of the day, it's 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 the golden rule. He it's what Jonathan Segal says. Yeah. Not not the actor, but the architect, awesome hero developer, right? Yeah. He who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. End of story. So we can comment and and give our city, our comments. So Lance, somehow we have to draft up something that they could literally copy and paste and use in there. Yes. Yes. Um, and say here's what here's what we would here's we, our recommendation. Yes. And why. then we have until the twentieth. To yep. write put, that and give that into that. Yep. The thing I, I want to do is I would like to get in, if, if we draft something like that up, is the other thing is, here's another little tip too. This is super interesting and, and a way for you to just network with people is they had these sign-in sheets at the at the back of the room, right? So we're the cool thing is, is we're architects plus builders plus developers. But at the end of the day, our bread and butter is architecture. So don't we want to talk to other developers? So if you're if you're another architect and you're not even developing, and if you can get in on some of these meetings like this, they have all the names of all the big name developers in town, all the email addresses. Boom! Take photos of that, and you get yourself an email chain together, or you or you at least just ask them to come out for talk. You know, have take them out to coffee, take them out to lunch. Uh, have have a little meet and greet, something like that. Keep them on your like your email list. If you if you have if you're like one of those people that does email lists, Al does email marketing. Yep. Um, with some of some of our others like Revit for Revit Rocket Ship. Yeah. Uh, th- By th- the way, it's going great right now. Is like I've really? had sign up almost every day is sign up, and then someone just bought the VIP package. Um, so August is amazing. August is amazing. Everybody who signed up, you were the best. Yeah. You were the greatest. Yep. Yeah, we love you. Side that was side point, okay. side conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so here's what I want to do. Back sorry. Back to the here's why I brought up the email list is write up a draft. You you and I will write up this draft of here's what it's going to be for. Here's what we are suggesting is here's how the you language. say the, the language of the ordinance. Literally spoon fit it to these people. Confer with the other developers in an email chain. Yeah. Or or maybe just a select few that you think we, that was maybe spoke up at the meeting or whatever. Yeah. You know maybe that's the way to go. And then and then you send then you send it off and That's show and, and you show like look by the way we have all the other developers on board here's what we're all saying in unison to you okay. it's written it's it's there's a, the precedence is set you can't deny this that's actually the first intelligence thing I've ever heard out of your mind. all time and this is episode seventy two well I've known you for like ten years maybe twelve <laughs> now I don't even know <laughs> so that's <laughs> number I want to point that out point that out point one because. Here was the problem I was having in, in my own head. What I was thinking about is we can give a suggestion, but what if 20 other people have suggestions and get lost in the noise? Exactly. So let's draft it. Let's talk to at least the big let's guys. Let's be the leaders. Let's take ownership of this thing. Yep. Um, and then and then send it to them. So then they don't have to think about it. They can say, okay, this is what, this is what makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's great. Okay. The second thing I want to talk to you about, newspaper. The newspaper man came and said, hey, can I have your... Hey, Mr. Lance. I've <laughs> heard about you. You're, hey. you're one of them noisemakers in town, Sonny. Is it Keiko? <laughs> Keiko? Um, so that's exactly the point I wanted to bring out. Noisemakers. So you know news is sensationalist. Yes. And you're more of a sensationalist. Absolutely. So I was going to say... What did he ask you or what do you plan on saying? And then are you thinking about like, okay, is he going to try? Because you know, sometimes these news people are not on our side. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they are not. Yep. So sometimes they want something to cause a trouble. And sometimes they want a quote just to give your perspective and be fair. At. Mm-hmm. Have you, have you thought about it in that way? Like, okay, what are they contacting me for to rabble rouse? And then will I play that game or are they contacting me? So I have a coherent developer quote. So I think I, I, I'll, I think why they are contacting me is because I stood up and I had a, I had a major fail in the meeting, which is totally fine. And one, it, what it was is I stood up and I pointed at Al and I said and I said, hey, I just everybody don't be bashful. Screw here. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> don't be bashful here. Raise your hand if this or if they apply this retroactively, if this will kill your development. Well, nobody did because what I'm finding out is like maybe Alex and I are the only only people that are willing to like stand up like it. I have no idea. No, no, no. The only issue was, and you said this later. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, oh right. I should have said that. After, After all the all the numbers, yeah, came because out. Alex and I, there you go. That's what it is. That is, was the I'm, only re- problem. I'm just realizing that Alex and I are like this thing is two inches away from our face, and everybody else it's a little bit further away, right? right? They've got bigger. Maybe this isn't their first development, so they don't have no. They're not just like this isn't their baby. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, <clears throat> I think because I stood up and said that and said this will ki- like out loud, this will kill our development if it's applied retroactively. I think that got his attention. So what I would like to do is I would like to stay on that point about 
if this like how threatening it is and therefore what we would like city council to uh, you move towards is a January 1st, 29 well, thing, something like that. This is I, me just spitballing. Yeah, no, but speaking of spitballing, this is why it's so valuable is that sometimes you want to kick off uh, the discussion. And I think I kicked it off with, you know, talking about when it gets implemented and then what those numbers actually mean. And then sometimes the role is to sum up. So that your question was just like a sum up question yeah. that, that you just said in the beginning, that's fine to say in the end. Mm-hmm. So think about that when you're at the, the meeting, like, okay, do I want my statement to kind of form the discussion, right? Or do I want my, my thing to cement, cement basically the conclusion that everyone can agree on Yeah, and just be aware of that. I, and you're not going to be perfect. No one's going to be perfect it, because what I'm learning too, is that there's a lot of people that. They're very professional and very knowledgeable. So in my head, I'm like, okay, always come with clear examples, be more professional, be more knowledgeable, stuff like that, because everyone's making good points. So um, it's just, this is part of inside the firm. Just You're inside the firm. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What do you think you would like me to steer it towards? Is a summation like that of <laughs> give them an example of, yeah, the, you know, what I said is this, here's why. Oh, no, wanna- no. So... Th- th- we might be on different light wavelengths. I think your question was fine. So Lance asked, will this kill your project before everyone got into the numbers and people couldn't even understand the numbers because they're crazy. Take that question and then say, Hey, at the end with all these numbers, how they are right now, does this threaten or kill your project? And if you would have just asked that question at the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pants I, I'm, a, I'm asking, I think they would have, I think they would have. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'm asking about the reporter. Oh, what, we, what were you thinking? What, what, if he's going to contact me today, what were you thinking we should, we should feed him? So I, you'll, you'll feel what he's trying to ask, right? If it's, if it's something like, um, you know, how did you feel or, you know, what is this? You can almost feel that it's going to, if he wants, to, which way he wants lead. to go. To Just lead. know that, remember, we've dealt with reporters and some are great and some aren't that, okay, w- whatever statement I have, needs to be the statement I want to make, not the statement he wants me to make. You know what I mean? Just like uh, Sasha Baron Cohen is leading everyone into traps yep. and just destroying them, and it's hilarious. Yep. So um, that, that's what, just, just think about that. And maybe think about, okay, what's, your big, what's, what's our biggest point that we want to get across? And that is it needs to be applied to projects in the future. So just maybe formulate uh, a thought where, um, hey, as developers, we are, we're actually on board with helping out each class and we want to, you know, build with that, but we can't do that to projects that are literally about to, you know, break ground. Financing has all been figured out. I don't know what you say, but like, that's our biggest issue. I know we're still not done spending money. Gosh. I don't know if you put wrap insurance on this, but that's one thing I wanted to talk about. So that for me, in my head, that just goes on the developer cost. I don't okay. know how else to put it in because we can't add it on unless we're chunking off more money. Like yeah. margins are so tight. I know people we, can't see that I'm pointing to the Lance's computer, but it, margins are tight, man. Tight. Very tight. And then this would cost us uh, $22,000 per unit. Yeah. We don't, we don't have. Literally, there's none. There's no, there's, you can't do it. We don't have. You know what's so funny? I did math. and During the I, meeting? I, during, <laughs> I don't have my notes. And we only have eight units, um, residential, yeah. residential units, and it would actually only cost maybe maybe like when the final numbers come in like fifteen thousand. So total, fi- yeah, fifteen thousand. Let's just say like they redo their numbers. I I said with their numbers before their meetings, I go, this is going to cost us ninety seven thousand dollars that we don't have. So what's eight times fifteen? Close to that, right? <laughs> Close to that, yeah. Eight times. Let me do the. You're doing it. You getting it done? Yeah. Where are we at? Everybody else is just screaming at the. One twenty. So I was thirty k off. Jesus, still don't have that kind of cash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's uh, so yeah. So one one other, one other thing too is just kind of switching over to nitty gritty numbers and what we're what we're doing. I, I know every architect, um, first of all, says don't do condo developments really hard to turn those down if you are hungry and you need to feed people you need to employ people so i i don't really like that 
I don't I don't like that at all. I think you have to have the right team when you go into content developments, meaning you trust the builder, you trust the developer, they trust you, and then we you all hopefully get something that's called wrap insurance. So it's W A R P if anybody's never ever heard about it. So we're Alex and I are going we have a meeting with um the selected agent who we're gonna talk to next week. And this is a big line item cost that you can't you can't you have be prepared for this because you you can't roll it into your construction loan. I already asked him about that. Because you basically have to have it in place, especially if you're uh, like the city that we we are developing and being contractors, and you have to have that in place. So therefore, you can get, unlock your contractor's license, which then unlocks the financing because then you're you're proven that like you can pull the permit as a as a builder, right? So it's this critical jigsaw piece. Um, and I'll just for our project, which which is going to be valued at uh, like the sales price, right around the three million dollar mark. Is it ends up our our wrap insurance is going to end up costing up about fifty thousand dollars, and you basically have to come up with twenty five percent of that in cash before anything happens. So this is one of those again. We've already spent tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in architectural and engineering fees, but this was kind of like a sticker shock to me yesterday that I'm just telling you live right now about that. Well, no, I told you yesterday, um, Al, but all of a sudden it's like here's another one. <laughs> Well, I, you got to just be prepared for it. Like you're going to have to have these kind of this kind of level of cash, which then kind of goes back to all the way to where you and I started this firm was, oh, we are just going to live as lean as possible and we're going to pay low salaries, pay ourselves very low salaries, literally half of market rate of what we get paid for if we were principals at other firms. And and then you try to keep that cash in the bank account so that if you try to make these kind of moves of expansion or development, you can draw from that right and make it work. Right. Going back to this, Lance, I know this has happened multiple times. So we get a project. We download one of our guys. Okay, do something like this. Here you go. Um, you know, draw it up. Have you... Has it ever happened where they said, okay, I took the sketches, whatever. It worked out like this. We had to change it because of the topography. That didn't work. So here, here's what it looks like. Doesn't that happen every time you do something? Almost. The, the, yeah. And the only time it didn't happen was uh, Top Shelf because Top Shelf is the greatest house ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before going into that. So this is, this is what's so crazy is that city council says, okay, here's what we want. But staff, go please write up. And I remember the mayor saying, take your best stab at it. Right. So one guy got up and he asked, he's like, we are in the middle of developing multiple, like hundreds of units. And we're under the assumption that we have 10% affordable, which we're building. Does this apply to our project that we're, and that they're done after, you know, after 10 years, you can sell them. And the lady in charge said, yeah, this would apply to your project. So it'd have to be 12% and you can never get them out. Yep. When they're it's already permanent. like it's in permanent. construction, it would apply to their project. So here's, here's the, the crazy part to me is that city council, obviously there's so much on their plates. You know, it's very difficult. Yeah, and they have a budget crisis right now. And they sell, tell staff, okay, here's our direction, but come up with your best idea. Why wouldn't staff, just like our, we'll call them staff, just to keep the same words, comes back to us and say, hey, great sketch, Lance, or, or client, and they don't say that, but here, here's how it's going to work out. So why wouldn't staff see that and, and say, okay, they want this to apply um, to past projects, but there's these other projects. Uh, they're already in the ground. We, do they not have an understanding of the process? Or, or you know, like how, how would they come back? Because I would say, hey, I, I heard what you guys wanted, but you can't include these projects that are, are this far along. So, my, so literally when they put up that presentation, everyone's talking. We're, we're, we're not fighting something that doesn't make any sense. Like, how, how do they just follow rules and then not not? You know what I think it, it is? I think people don't like to admit they're wrong. And I think people have trouble admitting they're wrong. So then it, that would require them going, okay, we were wrong about trying to retroactively apply this. We need, we, it's out of our heads now. It's so hard to get out of eat stuff like that out of your head and then just move on to something else, right? And literally, unless you are good at meditating, if you're good at meditating, then you can you can look at those problems and you can just say, okay, go away, and then you can you can you can do you know you can move on. Yeah, that's what I think. It, I think it's just fundamental human. That's human nature yeah. is what we're fighting against. Yeah, because again, it's the difference. What I keep hearing and what keeps happening is city council asks staff, 
hey, can we do this? What would it look like? And then they just parrot back exactly what city council wants. They're not saying... Take some responsibility. They're not saying do exactly what we say and don't deviate from it. They're saying, hey, show us what's... what's..." All all they have are these meetings (laughs) that they can, you know... I just, it's just crazy. Sorry to go off on a tangent there, but that's yeah, where I'm at. and that's where your brain was at. Okay. So, but going back to our project. Yeah. And this is going to relate to people that are trying to get projects. So if you're trying to win a bid, win anything, and if it's not for public, mm. I think this lesson is key. So Lance, you've been getting bids in and normally you've been bidding out two, three people at least. Trying to. Just like a homeowner is probably bidding out three architects. There's been an inter- interesting like coincidence pattern pattern that is not yeah I, w- I wouldn't even call it you could call it a coincidence you could call it a pattern whatever kind of language you want to use but there's been an interesting trend that's the what I was looking ah, for there's there been go. an interesting trend that's been happening so we are in such a boom market right now in Colorado and since the last recession the labor market just kind of went to crap um, because a lot of older guys just said we're done with it and so now you have all these young bucks and and then there's just a shortage in general so the problem we're facing that, that happens is that I'll send out our plans to six different people you know it could be just for like painters and I'll maybe hear back from one and then I got to do another round and but eventually I get down to like two or three people and even from, so like, first of all, um, it's hard for me to just get down from 12 to two to three people that will even talk at all. But then what's been super interesting is that when I get down to the two to three different entities, one of those has just been like above and beyond everybody else, especially when it comes to communication. They are instantly engaged. They instantly want to talk and they, they, they're like, I'll get you, I'll get you a proposal and I'll get you numbers within two or three days. They're almost calling me every other day. They have all kinds of questions. They want to come in and meet. And the same thing goes, I mean, it's top to bottom when it comes down from banks all the way down to like Home Depot. That was like one of the biggest surprises was we contacted several, I would call them mom and pop um, because they're only Colorado based uh, lumber yards and I expected those people to be much more nimble, quick, nimble, on quick, it. just personable. Local. And one of them we've done hundreds of thousands of dollars of business with already with the tiny houses that we built. So, oh, we have a repertoire. They know us personally. We've literally went on trips with these guys. We know, we know like their families and stuff. And then all so then, then is the, nothing was getting, nothing was getting done whatsoever. I still don't have a bid from those guys. So I spent the one of the, this last week, like two weekends ago, crunching numbers out of Revit and coming up with all the material takeoffs. I mean, doing like an estimator's job and you have to, if you're, if you're going to do a, be a general contractor. So counted all the sticks. However, how many sticks we need, how many bricks we need, the whole thing went into home Depot with a nice itemized list and said, Hey, I, I would like to sign up for your pro center. And they have been, not only have they crushed everybody with uh, customer service, all of these people who are doing exactly the same thing that I'm describing with Home Depot have also crushed everybody with pricing. So there's a trend that occurs that I think that like it kind of re- it, so that's why I think Alex is saying like it's re- it's it's full circle and it reinforces what we've done at F9 is getting back to people within 24 hours matters. Uh, turning around proposals within 24 hours matters. Being not the most expensive, not the most cheap, right in the middle can get you places, and then and then if you land at that price point. Honing in your systems like Revit Rocket Chip. Yep. So uh, I had a proposal that's basically, we just need to sign the papers, just legal work. But uh, a landscape architect said, hey, don't you need a bid for these two projects? And I, and I said, they're they're already taken for. Like, we already got bids from other ones, already picked it, done. Like, sorry. sorry. You can't even compete. Yep. I was just down um, south, way far away. I even charged for the meeting. He's like, you are the second architect that would even even respond to me and the first one I met with. So I'm sending him a proposal today and he didn't like my prices. He, you know, I told him what they're going to be and you know, I could tell he's hemming and hawing and, and all that stuff and we might not get it. That's fine. But we might be the only one that gives him a proposal this month and he might just that's do insane. it. And not to, because we give a, the service. He just maybe is used to bare bones whatever but then another architect might call him up be like oh hey i'd like to meet and be like we already picked one we're already developing it they might cut our fees in half but they don't even get the chance and then let's say you let's say you get the project 
Yeah. Like Alex is describing. Just because you, you, maybe you're even, like, you're even a little bit more expensive, but you at least return the calls. You were personable. You were on time, all that sort of stuff. Then let's say that client is in a super big hurry. And, and, and Ross and I are, are worth working with a client like that. This is, yeah. we've already landed the project. It's going to be really cool. I think it's going to be award winning. And we set these very, heavy deadlines like like we're gonna get these drawings done in three weeks i mean intense deadlines yeah. um, and then i dedicated him to the whole thing the the other tip i would give then is if you meet those deadlines like we are going to do today literally august 10th 2018 we are meeting that deadline the meeting we had it with them on wednesday they could not shake our hands enough they were so happy that we met the, that we met that we met met the deadline if, if you uh, jump right on top of them when they, when they, with the deadline, like if, they, if they're very happy, when, the, when you do that, ask for the review right then. It, like you got to capitalize on, That's oh smart. my God, they're super happy. Great. Okay, great. I'm so glad we were able to meet your deadline. You guys have been great clients. Uh, you guys seem to like us a lot. We would, we would really appreciate a five-star review. And then send them your Google link, send them your Facebook link, send them your Thumbtack link, whatever, and get those freaking reviews up because that's what matters. So I think one point that you made is, is very pertinent is that you dedicated a person, Yes. right? So when you have these crunch times or these situations, you need to dedicate a person and a lot of times it can't be you, right? Or if it is you here, that was a perfect example where you dedicated someone else. I have a project that actually has a good fee, but I probably underbid it because of the size of it, mm-hmm. right? So I had to dedicate a person, right? But the problem is that I don't want to put that pressure on the guys where I messed up. So I'm actually dedicating myself to do the floor plans. Little get, Al. Get, little tiny Al. To get those in place and get those locked down and cemented and then cleared. Then I can pass it off to, let's say, Jason to do elevations. Maybe he'll catch really you up. Good. What? And then maybe he'll catch you up in time. Is that where you're going no, with this? No, I'm, I'm you're catching You're the catcher-upper. Us. I'm the catching up because it was my fault. So it's on me because here's they have a sketch. God, if somebody had a book or a podcast that they could refer to to describe what you're describing. <laughs> so, so, uh, it's almost we, like you took responsibility, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Extreme Ownership by Jocko Will- <laughs> Willing. Huh. Funny. Um, we had a sketch, and guess what? I didn't just make the sketch and just turn it back. I took all my I was knowledge. Act- and to let everybody, I was making fun of Al for drafting, just so, just so everybody knows. Dude. I was like, oh, what are you doing architecting over there? I know, but no, it's great. I, you feel uh, good? No, no, no. Sorry. I'll, uh, so I revised it, and, and literally, I think I ta- saved a revision or two. Oh. Just by keep on revising and revising. I didn't have to go and talk to the person and say what we can do or what we can't do. I just made decisions, went, and hopefully- Oh, is this the new template thing you're getting at? Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what did you say? So what, what did you say? About what? Where I said, hold on till I finish that thought. Oh, Al Gore. Oh, who, who caught everybody up? You caught it. You, you were the one that took responsibility, caught people up. Um, that's where I was going. I'm sorry. I'm being interrupting Lance today. Oh, man. Just <laughs> killing you. You, you threw me off. <laughs> I have you. no idea. No, no, no. So, wasn't there a project? I thought this was the project. Designing. Yes. Designing. Thank you. Designing. So, there's two projects that I have no choice but actually to design in. You're working on two right now? Two. Wow. Firestone Central Plaza, yeah, for the city. And guess what? I'm I'm back into it. I'm like, holy cow! I like designing. <laughs> nice. It, it it's actually refreshing. The amount of designing that Lance and I do is very rare. Um, I'm pretty much at zero these days. I've been at zero, and I've just gotten back. And I realize why people like to stay there, and I realize how tempting it is to get out. But maybe just know sometimes you need to take ownership, and you need to get out of designing, and you need to pass that off. But there's opportunities, like I just said, where I have to design this one house and then pass it off. And I have to do the Firestone thing um, just because of the way things are working out. And then you, you'll, you'll get it. And how we, Lance and I, do this too is that we always do one fu- fun project a year. So that's your chance to do whatever you want. Um, but no, I think the yeah. problem with firms going from one to two is that they can't. One to two people, sorry. Yep, okay. or, or to three to four. Yeah. They can't relinquish 
that design. Yeah, aspect. you got to let it go you if can't. you really want to expand. And, and you know, you can be it can be whatever reason you want to. If you if you want to expand just for just because you want to make more money a little bit more passively, I totally get it. I'm there with you. Or for sanity of work hours and not the exactly. highs and the Let, lows. Let's say your the... wife is going to have a baby and you need to uh, you need to you want to take some paternity leave. Like, good for you. That baby is only a baby one time. Yep. Uh, same thing, I, I think. But you have to you have to let go a little bit. And um, for for me, it has been just thrilling to let go and see what our guys can do. At the same time, though, know that you're going to be stepping into meetings and maybe you didn't have enough time to review what they did. Right. You're going to have to get good at massaging that in a meeting. Uh, I don't even have a good example right now. There's there's too many to name. Yep. <laughs> it's not in a bad way. It's just kind of like, oh, shoot. Yep, you brought, yep, you brought that up. Dang it. Well, and... Because this is, I, I've had that too. This is what's hard is it, that one thing that gets brought into a meeting probably has multiple ramifications. So when you're reviewing it, this is what's hard. And this is why I was able to do my plan is like, okay, yes, if we just move that, but that's going to trickle down and guys will get better and all that. Um, so it's great when you do do that, when you do dis- pass on a design responsibility, you bring those people to the meetings. They need to know that that tension exists. They need to know that, Hey, maybe that was in the list and they forgot. Not that you're telling them, but like, it's all like, Oh, they did say that they wanted a, a bay pop out there and they know who forgot it because they designed it. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, like the client will bring it up. Um, yeah. My, my, my off the cuff suggestion is, uh, to just take ownership as soon as, as soon as something happens, you go, Oh, I'm sorry. We overlooked that. We will, we, and then you physically show them, look, we're writing it down. We're taking note of that. We won't let it happen again. And here's where we're at. So you get a few slip ups. I think if you do it three meetings in a row, you're in trouble. I think if you do it two meetings in a row, you're slightly in trouble. So just don't do it again. Yes. There you go. Cool. All that. All right. Do we have a best friend who has a one man architecture firm that we've been subtly hinting about the whole time? Best architecture firm in Florida, as far as I know. As far as I know, too, actually. Alexa, play Nick Reed's. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. A reading. Mistake number one. The first mistake brands make is that they fail to focus on aspects of their offer that will help people survive and thrive. All great stories are about survival, either physical, emotional, relational, or spiritual. A story about anything else won't work to captivate an audience. Nobody is interested. This means that if we position our products and services as anything but an aid in helping people survive, thrive, be accepted, find love, achieve an aspirational identity, or bond with a tribe that will defend them physically or socially, good luck selling anything to anybody. These are the only things people care about. We can take that truth to the bank or to bankruptcy court should we choose to ignore it as an undeniable fact. That, my friends, is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Boys, congrats on the development project hitting budget. Here's a proverbial woo for you. Alexa, play Jump Around. Toodles. Every time. <laughs> How I see this, so <laughs> survival was the key word that I brought out. And a lot of people, they know that they want an end goal. But between them and the end goal is a jungle. A jungle of opportunity, jungle of options, a jungle of just everything. And without... Going, saying it how he's saying, how I feel pitches are, we are giving you the roadmap of how to get there. So we're explaining, okay, there's this, there's all this stuff. You don't know if your kitchen should be here. You don't know if this should be there. You don't know what the outside is going to look like. Um, you don't know what structural things. So then you lay out the phases. Then you lay out the everything and it becomes clear. So they know that there's still a jungle, but now they have a path through and, it. Yeah, and they want reassurance. I think people want more reassurance than they do your ideas. Does that make sense? 
So, like, if you, let's say you're trying to be a capital A architect and it's like your way or the highway. I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what the majority of people want. I think what they want is they want reassurance that they're not doing weird stuff, you know, or that like their weird idea isn't so weird, right? Right. So, like, a lot of times I will, this hasn't come up lately, but it's a, I think it's a good example is the first duplex that Alex and I did was a, uh, that we we went round and round and round about this damn powder room, and ever since then, because it was so close to the kitchen, right? Oh, yeah. So people just had these the dining this, room, actually. The, the dining room, even worse. Yeah. So you're sitting there eating, right? Well, what happens when you, somebody goes to the bathroom? They open the door. You can imagine, right? Yeah. Or like you're just sitting in it. Doesn't matter. Point point is like we weren't prepared at that point to tell that developer and reassure him. Don't worry about it. It's not going to affect sale prices. But now since we've had that had to happen to him and then we asked him later on, hey, remember that powder? Did the powder room ever? And he's like, nobody even brought it up. Nobody even brought it up. So I think a lot of it comes through experience too and just trying, just seeing all the different kinds of scenarios you can have in any kind of design project, right? And where you've seen it enough times. Like another one is like a lot of people are wanting to have us do, you walk through the master bathroom into the closet now. And when I first started designing, I thought, nope, totally weird. Now that I've actually lived in a house that's like that, plus I have all kinds of clients coming to me wanting that, it's mm-hmm. like, nope, this is a normal thing, and actually this is the trend, and same thing with like a bathtub. So I think for me, it's about reassuring people and make, giving them confidence in what we're doing and that they're not making a bad decision that they're going to regret after it's built. Nice. I agree. You agree? He agrees. What's next? ARE Jeopardy. Let's bring in the boys. All right, first question, everyone ready? Wind pressure is greatest at A, the base of the building, B, the centroid of the building, C, the top of the building, D, the corners of the building. I will reread that for everyone. Yeah, a little slower, for which that was fast. Wind pressure is greatest at A, the base of the building, B, the centroid of the building, C, the top of the building, D, the corners of the building. Do, 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 do. Do 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 boop da da D B A it is C the top of the building people uh okay no one on that one uh so th- th- here we go I'm drawing this out uh this is your wind pressure right L- more at the top less at the base uh question number two rebar in concrete should be placed A on the compression side, B, on the shear side, C, on the torsion side, D, on the tension side. Rebar in concrete. This should be an easy one, right? Should be an easy one. What do we got? D, 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 on the tension side. You guys are correct. One, one, one. One, one, one. All right. On to Lance's awesome questions. Three, Yay. what are round steel bars with surface deformations that are placed in the forms prior to casting of concrete and that primarily resist tension known as? Huh. A, rebar. B, reinforcing steel. C, bars. D, steel. Ooh. I'm going to, you know what? And I'm going to... No, no, I think you're correct because there's a difference. I know why there's a difference. Well, okay, we can talk about that, sure, afterwards. Yep. I'll read it one more time. Yep. <laughs> well, I wanted to add something to this one. I wanted to add something to the... Uh, I'm going to add... Uh, an to an the an answers? Answer, okay. This is on the fly, ARE Jeopardy. Ready? All right, questionable. Breaking rules. This is my rules. I'm the government here. Three, what are the round what are round steel bars with surface deformations that are placed in the forms prior to casting of concrete and that primarily resist tension known as A rebar, B reinforcing steel, C bars, D steel, or E A N B. Yeah, I got I got a sigh from one of the guys who's not impressed with my tricky tricky. <laughs> Okay, you want me to say, is there, sorry, is there a request to reread the question? All the answers. All the answers. A, rebar. B, reinforcing steel. C, bars. D, steel. Or E, A, and B. 
A lot of sh- a lot of head shakers. <laughs> Grash, you got a big Okay, we got E, A, and B. The answer is E. Congratulations, Mark, on not getting tricked by Lance's tricky questions. So uh, before, it would have been A, in my opinion. Yeah. Correct. But where I'm getting these questions from is um, they actually specified reinforcing steel. So they're not wrong. You couldn't just say bars because that's too... Yeah, you know, steel is steel. I so. I agree with your amendment to the answers. Actually, now fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so now what do we got? Two one one, two one one, two one one. Okay, here we go. Mark's just got to hang on to his lead, and he's got this baby. He's got it. I know everybody listening is is rooting for Mark. Mark four. Mark Badler, 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 Badler. <laughs> oh. <laughs> four. What is a vertical pipe used to conduct roof water to the ground? Commonly known as A, gutter, B, downspout, C, leader, D, water taker, or E, downspout and leader. <laughs> That's such an so, airy way to do it. Just to let you know, I I'm hate killing the, it. The I airy hope, does that all the time. I hate that. Exactly, which is why I should be on the board for writing the questions. I, would. I should be getting paid. Hmm. To write write the questions. All the, okay, Are you uh, sure you'd be safe in this office? <laughs> um, one more round of the answers, Ross. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> answers. One more. I'm going to read the question to you one more time. What is a vertical pipe used to conduct roof water to the ground? Commonly known as is it a gutter, b downspout, c leader, d water taker, or e downspout and leader? Here we go. B, B, B. The correct answer is E. Downspout and leader. Mark Mark wins, though. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> and uh, Mark gets a place. Pick a place, which is awesome. Just know I have to, to leave. Yep. yep. I have to leave at 110 no matter what. Um, well, let's so, just drive separately and you can leave without us. Absolutely. Nobody needed to know that who's listening, but there you go. Okay. Okay, a shout out to uh, Second Studio Guys, which is podcast group. It's Archie Speak. Go listen to them. It's Entree Architect Podcast. Go listen to them. Both podcasts. Join the Entree Architect group. It's free. You can type in almost anything you want. Keep it topical. So don't listen to the first thing that I said. Make it about architecture. Um, also, Eric Thirty by Forty does great videos on YouTube. If you want to learn Revit. Revit rocket ship, go there. Um, it's an amazing resource for you. It has tutorial videos broken down by segment. You actually complete and make something that you can use at the end. Um, it has a template for you, the template that we've created. This has been homed over nine years and hundreds and hundreds of students, so you'll absolutely love it. That's all I got, Lance. What do you got? Here's what I got. I got a special request today. As we near the end of the summer and start to enter the fall, school is going to start again, and I know we have several student listeners. We also have several uh, teachers and lecturers that listen to this podcast. Please do us a favor, and at some point during the semester, suggest this podcast to one of your students or uh, classes, and we would be grateful for it. Um, so that's all I got. I can guarantee a high five if we ever meet. If they do that, I will guarantee a double high five. One from Al, one from me. And simultaneously, simultaneously, you put up two hands, two high fives coming your way. You got it. All right. See you next week.